Okay, there's the two movements from the Westinghouse meters that we took apart. Now, we're going to have a look at a Weston, or at least this particular Weston right here. I also have this Weston meter, which is an AC volt meter with a 75 ohm or 75 volt and 150 volt scale, and I certainly plan to be keeping this for use maybe long-term monitoring of my, my household line voltage for example it'll it might come in handy like that even though it does have the horrendously low ohms per volt reading of about 24 ohms if you do the calculation here where you measure or you do the resistance divided by the ohms range and you get about 24 volts or 24 ohms per volt on each of these and um, I calculated that if you put 120 volt on the 150 volt range and it dissipates 4 watts really really bad as far as a voltmeter is concerned but hey it does have all these vent holes in the back lots of, of uh, mica plates you can see in there very similar to what we saw on the Westinghouse watt meter and we can see something similar a lot more of those inside this one that i will be taking apart it even has the original sticker on the back of this thing here calibrated in 1964 very nice as a matter of fact i don't think this is actually weston calibration this is uh this might be somebody else doing the calibration here but you can see it's all very official looking and there are the west uh, the the mica plates in there and looks like some other resistances coils of uh, resistance wire on the side of it in there and a little button right here it gets kind of stuck sometimes i can press it down and then i have to turn it or pull it out a little bit to to release it that's only for the high voltage range for the 750 volt range whereas the 100, 150 volt and 300 volt ranges those are hardwired to the terminals on top here but the switch is, is in series with this terminal on the 750 volt range and these ohms per volt ranges they come out to about 43 ohms per volt so a little bit better than the other one but still, you, you'd really have to have a low impedance voltage source to use this thing effectively. Okay, so let's open up this resistance panel here. And there we have it, all the different series resistances for the different ranges. Same kind of construction that we saw in the, the Westinghouse watt meter, although much cleaner there's no signs of any degradation at all on these on these uh, mica sheets in here because they do have this this nice clean varnish or some kind of polyurethane covering coating the the whole resistance coil on each sheet very very good quality I should say that the Westinghouse meter that did actually have some some varnish coating on the the coils too but I guess they just didn't put enough on it or the varnish coating itself was a very low quality or maybe they only coated the actual coil part of it and totally ignored everything outside of the the actual coil of wire and that might have caused caused some uh, some kind of degradation on it I really don't know. I can't really fault Westinghouse for poor design on this. It might have just been some other environmental factors. I should also say that for this Weston, Weston meter, this is very typical construction where you have this big open void right here for filling up with any kind of resistance, whether it's a series resistance for a voltmeter or a shunt resistance for an ammeter. These all um model 904 there it is right there weston model 904 very very typical in this kind of form factor it's always going to have this little this void in the back here for any kind of resistances for the different ranges
Now for opening up the movement part of the box, we've got another couple of calibration seals right here. There's a, a W right there that's been, been a little bit more mangled, but this one up here is in much better condition. And that's going to be a W for Weston now instead of Westinghouse. All right, so this thing is either going to be a moving iron vein or an electrodynamometer. I took out these six screws right here. Let's pop open the hood and see what we get. And of course, another steel canister in there that we have to crack that open and have a closer look. And there we go. I think it's definitely a moving iron vein I can see in here, but we'll have a closer look at that pretty soon. I took off the screws for the scale here and I was pleasantly surprised to see some original factory writing on here. Very, very nice, interesting stuff. We've got some bizarre numbers here, part numbers, inspect inspector numbers, I have no idea what's going on there. But right here we've got FS, that's full scale, 150, 300, 750 volts. That's what we see right here on the other side. And then there's another one down here, 150 amp, I guess, 150A. And then there's a 10 and a 20 and a 50. So those would also work. You could potentially use this exact same printed scale right here, but just change all the numbers to be 10, 20, and 50 on the, the far end of it. And equal divisions, of course, going all the way down. Except, of course, we're down here where it's definitely going to be non-linear, especially with these, with these AC uh, voltmeters or ammeters. Most interesting right here is May 28th, 1951. So even though it had this calibration date from uh, 1964, clearly this thing was made well before that. And... Um, that would make it almost as old as my dad. He was born in January 1951. So here's the meter movement out of the box. We've got another damping vein inside the, the chamber right here. So that's the coil of wire right there. And you can see the, the moving iron plate in there, or the iron vein. And there's a moving one and a fixed one, and we can get a better view with a picture here. So here's a look at the Weston Instrument sketchbook. It's got some nice sketches of different doodles and um, applications for um, measuring stuff on the front and back covers. And everything in between is very beautiful. Pictures, schematics, applications, interior views of some of their, their most um, common and probably most expensive products back then. This is copyright 1945 right here. Anyway, what I want to look at is right here. There's two different types of the iron vein mechanism. We got this one right here. That's the, the radial vein mechanism and it has a single iron plate in there that's fixed to the side of the coil, the hole inside the coil. And there's the moving one which then gets repelled because when this thing has um, current going through the coil making a magnetic field and both of these iron plates will be magnetized in the same polarity and they will be repelled from each other and that'll and that'll work for both AC or DC but this thing is made strictly only for AC because the problem with this thing is that if you do apply DC on here then you run the risk of permanently magnetizing these plates and that would cause the needle to not return to a zero position once you remove the voltage from it. Now I discovered an interesting feature with this mechanism and that is if you loosen up these two set screws right here then you can turn this thing and let me hold this out of the way. The whole there you can see the the black coil, the plastic casing and the electric coil that goes up and down. 
so with respect to the iron veins on the inside so that's going to be a, a fine-tuned mechanism right there so you can set this and calibrate it properly so that the needle actually reads exactly what you want it to read on the scale I took some nuts off this thing and we should be able to just lift it up like that there we go so there's that one quarter of a pie slice hole there inside the the coil and that's it it's just the the Bakelite housing and the magnetic coil itself here's the iron vein here mounted on a piece of brass and there's the other iron vein the moving vein so yeah very very nice construction here final meter out of the four it's the the micro ammeter direct current micro ammeter model s from the sensitive research instrument company or corporation i noticed that the the label here the spec card that's got sensitive research instrument corporation but then the the scale on here that says company on there so corporate company no big deal there's the specs on there for the four different ranges that it has from five to five thousand microamps there's model s and the number i guess that's the serial number and here's a knob for the four ranges plus complete short circuit and two connections right here the top cover just like on the westinghouse meters that we looked at before completely completely removable now I did say earlier that I took this apart once before and I found that there was an open circuit on the the moving coil in here and I might have a shot at repairing it but I really don't have high hopes for that anyway we can at least look at the resistance as it is in the short circuit mode it's reading about 1.5 ohms there so not quite a perfect short circuit and of course it wouldn't be on the the five five milliamp range here a hundred ohms 500 microamp 1k and then 10k and finally 100 kilo ohms on the five microamp range and you can see that the needle does not deflect now this meter should certainly be pumping out more than five microamps um, into this thing to you know to measure any resistance it's got a put out some current and there's no deflection on there at all so certainly a problem with the the uh, the coil the moving coil circuit in order to get this Bakelite cover off I had to take off the the knob for the rotary switch I already loosened the set screw in here and it's a very nice custom design as you might expect in an instrument like this you can see all these different notches in here looks like 13 13 notches in the bottom of this so you could potentially have a switch with 12 different selections and one off selection or one neutral or short circuit or some other kind of um, neutral selection anyway those holes are for a little steel ball bearing oops which is pressed up with that spring right there very nice custom design there's a little felt washer around the shaft there to keep the dust and grime out let me take this out and then the whole thing just comes right up and there it is look at that first a look at the rear of the the top cover there's this aluminum foil going all the way around here and that's going to be an electrostatic shield tied to the positive terminal right there and of course the screw for that positive terminal when you put it back down makes contact with this little spring mounted piece of metal right here and then that's also oh I just breathed on it a little too heavily right there and that was enough to make the needle spring up like that but anyway that's connected to this to the back plate right here so basically the whole needle is surrounded by 
uh, an electrostatic shield which keeps it safe from any kind of electrostatic forces that might impin might cause it to uh, to deflect otherwise give you a erroneous reading which is very very easy for this thing I don't have to apply a lot of force at all to get it going okay I took the scale off of it and it comes out in two pieces there's the one metal sheet here which has the the eight zero four eight zero eight one four that's the serial number and some somebody's initials right there M L S I wonder if that's the same guy who who inspected or calibrated it standardized standardized by someone else I guess J D M Minam something like that I don't know 1948 March 3rd anyway two different pieces this piece is a sheet of brass chrome plated to a mirror finish on one side absolutely beautiful a little bit bent but can straighten it out and whoa do some weird fun house effects now the whole plastic or Bakelite form in here is is very versatile for all sorts of different applications for different types of of meters there is plenty of space in here for you know what for any kind of movement I guess they could probably put a moving iron vein movement for AC meters potentially there's um, these six brass terminals are nice and polished and you think that this is just plastic pegs but those are also brass those are also equally viable metal terminals in there they just have a, a black coating black paint on top of them and over here in this little cylinder there's a H and there's a J with a plus and minus that would be for a thermocouple junction where you have a thermocouple instrument capable of reading uh, high frequency voltages or currents and you just send the current through a heater through a little heater which is in contact with the thermocouple junction that thermocouple junction then generates a, uh, a very small amount of current to to drive the needle back and forth up here we've got four resistors these are actually labeled with resistance that um, that it is not just part numbers so we've got 100 900 9000 and 90,000 in contrast to the Westinghouse uh, resistors that we saw before those just had part numbers on them and plenty of other holes all around here for mounting all sorts of other different resistors in different locations and they're already pre-tapped too you can see some some tapped threads in those holes looks like uh, 832 maybe 632 or 832 size potentially I should also note that the the magnet it's not a nice round horseshoe magnet like like what we saw in the the Westinghouse voltmeter this um, this block right here on top that's actually the Alnico magnet right there just that one piece and then we've got these two chunks of iron two iron bars going down to contain the magnetic field and send it through the de Arsenval galvanometer movement and here's the schematic of what's inside four resistors four resistors and those of course are for the the range selection and that whole network of resistors is in parallel with the the meter of movement the the needle or the the coil the moving coil right down here and even though I can't actually measure it because it is open circuit I can tell you that it's gonna be around 5474 ohms because up here we have the overall ohms for each range 5190 ohms on the 5 microamp range and if you do the math that's the overall for everything if you do the math and it comes out to this value right here it doesn't quite match the one at 
50 microamp range. I, I calculated 9050, whereas this one shows 9060 ohm. Close enough. So certainly should be seeing five to 6,000 ohms on that coil. And I don't see that. It's more like infinity. Well, it looks like I will definitely not be able to repair this. I took the movement out of the magnet assembly here and spent a good half hour trying to solder some wires directly onto this, onto the wire of the coil itself. So I'd be bypassing every single solder joint and connection that goes between the coil of wire here and up to the the pin that goes to the center of the the helical spring and then the spring itself and then up here bypassing all that straight onto this didn't really read anything on the ohm meter so it's got to be open circuit somewhere in there it must have been overloaded at some point in time somebody probably sent too much current to it or tried to use it as a voltmeter instead of an ammeter and that just fried it. it doesn't seem to have any signs of physical damage there's no discoloration from being burnt at all maybe a very quick death this thing must have had very quick uh, burnout on the wire or maybe I don't know just it's gone and I won't be able to replace this coil that's for sure and to give you an idea of just how thin this wire is there's a small piece of it that's the darker strand um, the upside down U shape and then that other strand that you see there that's one of my hairs off of my head and for reference here's a 26 gauge copper wire so that coil look at that just picks it right up because of I don't know stickiness whatever it's just so ridiculous ridiculously thin that coil in the in the meter of movement it's not a total loss though because I unscrewed the Bakelite form and now I have a nice wooden box I have no idea what I would put in there but it might come in handy one of these days and there we have it we got all four meters completely torn down here's all four of the different movements very nice wide variety of different mechanisms here we've got the permanent magnet movement from the the first uh, the Westinghouse uh, voltmeter that we took apart DC voltmeter and then of course there was the Westinghouse AC and a DC watt meter with the electrodynamo meter movement that really is what it's called Here's the spec sheet it says this instrument operates on the electrodynamic principle and we've got the electrodynamo meter mechanism here in the Weston sketchbook and something very similar that we've seen already with the two outer coils making the field magnetic field and then there's the moving inner coil and here's the moving iron vein movement from the AC voltmeter and We've got the, another permanent magnet movement from the DC um, microammeter. Now, even though each one of these measures something entirely different um, in the in instrument that they came from, fundamentally, they all measure current because every single one of these needs a small amount of current going through a coil of wire in order to make that needle deflect from one side to the other. As far as whether it's displaying volts, amps, or watts, well, that all depends on, on what you want it to, to display, really, and any kind of external resistors, um, which would be in parallel or in series with the, the moving coil, or in this case, we've got the field coil for the moving iron vein, but fundamentally, they all measure current and it's only through precise calibrations that they can display other quantities. And of course, that's not ideal, especially when you want to measure volts, because an ideal voltmeter would not actually draw any current. This Westinghouse voltmeter drew 
or rather it had a resistance of 200 no 2000 ohms on the 10 volt range modern day digital multimeter handheld fluke like this that's going to have 10 meg ohm resistance no matter what range you're on or in most cases no matter what range you're on it'll be 10 10 meg ohm resistance there is another meter voltmeter i have here and we'll take a look at this in another video it's another sensitive research instrument corporation and it's an electrostatic voltmeter completely zero current draw at least on dc and we'll have a look at that at another time thanks for watching if you learned something please give this video a thumbs up and i want to leave one last look with this Weston sketchbook on the front and back covers. They've got all these nice doodles of different circuits and applications and ways to, to measure various uh, quantities with the, the analog meters. And there's one circuit right here, which I have found especially fascinating when I first got this book probably 15 years ago. And that is this little circuit right here this little puzzle really, what is the resistance of, of a, a cube of one ohm resistors as measured from opposite corners like that. So I figured it out a long time ago and I hope you can do the same. See you later.